What if the drink you reach for every single morning, the one you were warned to fear, wasn't slowly damaging your kidneys, but quietly protecting them instead? And what if avoiding it out of good intentions was actually pushing your kidney health in the wrong direction without you realizing it? I'm Dr. Ethan Cole, and I need to say this clearly because for millions of people watching right now, this is urgent. Chronic kidney disease doesn't usually announce itself with pain or warning signs. It progresses silently year after year until one day you're told your options are limited. And here's the dangerous part. Many people unknowingly make daily choices they believe are safe for their kidneys while removing habits that science now shows may slow kidney decline. Coffee is one of the most misunderstood of all. For decades, patients have been told to cut it out, avoid it, fear it, especially if their creatinine is rising or their kidneys aren't what they used to be. But in the last few years, something remarkable has happened. Massive long-term studies, genetic data, and kidney-specific research have begun to tell a very different story, one that most people and even many doctors still haven't caught up with. And that's why I want you to stay with me until the end of this video. Because today I'm going to show you what the latest science actually says about coffee and kidney protection, who it helps, who needs to be careful, and how one simple adjustment to a habit you already have could make a meaningful difference to your kidney health over the next 10 years, not through fear, but through understanding. For years, coffee has been treated like a silent suspect in kidney disease. Patients hear the same warning over and over, your kidneys are struggling, so you should probably cut back on coffee. I've heard it in clinics and comment sections, even whispered with guilt by people who miss their morning cup, but are terrified of making things worse. And here's the problem, that advice was built on fear, not on the strongest science we now have. I remember a patient in his late 60s who told me he had quit coffee completely after his creatinine crept up. He did everything right by the old rules, no coffee, no joy, constant worry. Yet his kidney numbers kept declining. When newer research came out and we revisited his habits, the question wasn't why coffee was hurting him, but whether removing it had taken away something quietly protective. And the data is hard to ignore. In 2020, a massive meta-analysis combined results from 12 long-term cohort studies following more than half a million people for over two decades. What it found surprised even seasoned kidney researchers. People who drank coffee had a lower risk of developing chronic kidney disease, a lower chance of protein leaking into their urine, and most strikingly, a significantly lower risk of dying from kidney-related causes. That's not a small association, that's a population-level signal. Then in 2025, newer U.S. data refined the picture even further. Adults who drank more than one and a half cups of coffee per day showed about a 24% lower likelihood of having chronic kidney disease even after adjusting for aged blood pressure and diabetes. And in the long-running RX study, those drinking two to three cups daily had roughly a 20% lower risk of acute kidney injury, the kind of sudden damage that often accelerates long-term decline. When evidence this large and consistent points in the same direction, it forces us to pause and rethink old assumptions. Coffee in moderation isn't showing up as a threat, it's showing up as a marker of protection. But understanding that alone still isn't enough because there's another factor, less obvious, more powerful, that determines whether kidneys simply survive or stay stable for years to come. What really changes everything isn't just whether coffee is linked to kidney disease, it's how fast the kidneys decline over time. Because in real life, kidney failure almost never happens overnight. It happens quietly, millimeter by millimeter, year after year, while people think they're doing okay. And that's where this next insight becomes deeply personal. I've sat across from patients who told me, doctor, my numbers only get a little worse every year, so I figured I had time and they did until they didn't. Kidney health isn't about today's lab result. It's about the slope of decline. A small difference each year can mean the difference between staying stable into your 70s or facing dialysis far sooner than expected. That's why a 2023 meta-analysis caught the attention of kidney specialists around the world. Instead of just asking who develops kidney disease, Researchers looked at how quickly kidney filtration declines, and what they found was subtle but incredibly important. Regular coffee drinkers experience a measurably slower decline in estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR, compared to non-drinkers. 
Now that slowing might sound modest on paper, but over 10 years it adds up. A slightly gentler decline can be the gap between maintaining independence and crossing the threshold where symptoms, medications, and life limitations suddenly accelerate. In kidney medicine, slowing progression even a little is often more powerful than trying to reverse damage after it's done. This reframes coffee in a completely different way. It's not about a quick boost or a short-term effect. It's about long-term pacing, giving the kidneys less stress, more resilience, and more time. But here's the part most people still don't see coming. Coffee doesn't just slow decline through one pathway. It works through several layers of protection that most conversations never even mention. But only knowing that coffee slows kidney decline still isn't enough because there's another hidden factor at play one that can quietly tip the balance towards stability or rapid damage if you're not aware of it. Once people hear that coffee may slow kidney decline, the next question almost always comes fast and it's a fair one. But what about kidney stones? Because for many adults, especially after 50 stones, aren't a distant fear. They're a painful memory or a constant worry or something they've been warned could come back at any time. I remember a patient who told me the worst pain of his life wasn't a heart issue or surgery, it was passing a kidney stone. After that experience, he avoided anything he thought might stress the kidneys, including coffee. What he didn't realize was that the story around coffee and stones has quietly flipped in recent years. New genetic and population data published in 2024 revealed something surprising. Regular coffee consumption was associated with a lower risk of kidney stone formation, not higher. And this wasn't guesswork, it was tied to specific biological mechanisms. Coffee has a mild diuretic effect, meaning it increases urine flow, which helps prevent minerals from concentrating and crystallizing into stones. At the same time, its antioxidant compounds reduce oxidative stress inside the kidneys, an environment where stones are more likely to form. When researchers looked deeper, they found that coffee drinkers tended to have urinary patterns that were less favorable to stone development, more flow, less stagnation, and better balance. In simple terms, coffee helps keep things moving instead of letting trouble settle and harden. This matters because kidney stones don't just cause pain. They can trigger inflammation infections and sudden drops in kidney function, especially dangerous for anyone whose kidneys are already vulnerable. Preventing stones isn't just about comfort, it's about protecting long-term kidney health. But here's where things start to connect in a way most people never hear. Coffee's benefits don't stop at urine flow or antioxidants. There's a deeper biological reason it keeps showing up as protective across kidney studies, and it happens at the cellular level right inside the kidney itself. But only knowing that coffee may reduce stone risk still isn't enough because there's another mechanism far more powerful that explains why coffee consistently shows up on the protective side of kidney health. At this point, many people are thinking, okay, coffee slows, decline lowers stone risk, but why? Because benefits that show up again and again in large studies don't happen by accident. They happen when something interacts with the body at a deep biological level and coffee does exactly that inside the kidneys. I often explain this to patients using a simple image. Your kidneys are like high-precision filters working non-stop. Over time, inflammation scarring poor blood flow and high blood sugar slowly clog and stiffen those filters. What makes coffee different is that it targets several of these damaged pathways at once, not just one. First, coffee is loaded with powerful antioxidants, chlorogenic acids, polyphenols, and melanoidins, that reduce oxidative stress inside the glomeruli, the tiny filtration units of the kidney. Less oxidative stress means less inflammation, and less inflammation means slower damage. But that's only the beginning. Research shows caffeine also suppresses the TGF beta pathway, a key driver of kidney scarring. And scarring, once it accelerates, is one of the main reasons kidneys lose function permanently. Then there's blood flow. Caffeine increases nitric oxide availability, helping regulate pressure and circulation inside the nephrons. Better blood flow means the kidneys aren't constantly fighting against microischemia, those tiny repeated oxygen shortages that quietly wear tissue down. Add to that improved insulin sensitivity, and suddenly the kidneys are dealing with fewer sugar spikes and less metabolic stress overall. And here's the part that surprises almost everyone. Coffee doesn't just act in the kidneys, it acts through the gut. 
Its polyphenols shift gut bacteria toward producing more short-chain fatty acids compounds that reduce systemic inflammation and oxidative stress throughout the body, including the kidneys. This gut-kidney connection helps explain why coffee keeps showing protective effects across different populations and studies. Taken together, coffee isn't just a stimulant. It's acting like a multi-layered defense system, reducing inflammation, slowing, scarring, improving blood flow, stabilizing metabolism, and calming immune stress. But here's the critical twist most people miss. Even something protective can become harmful if used the wrong way, at the wrong time, or in the wrong form. Because only knowing how coffee protects the kidneys isn't enough. There's another factor often more dangerous than coffee itself that quietly cancels these benefits for millions of people. This is the moment where many people misunderstand the message and accidentally do the opposite of what helps them. Because hearing that coffee can protect the kidneys doesn't mean all coffee is safe all the time for everyone. In my clinical work, I don't see people harmed by coffee itself. I see people harmed by how they use it. I once worked with a patient whose kidney numbers were slowly improving, but his blood pressure remained stubbornly high. When we looked closer, it turned out he was drinking large, highly caffeinated coffees late into the afternoon, chasing energy while quietly sacrificing sleep. His kidneys weren't just reacting to caffeine, they were reacting to chronic sleep disruption and stress hormones, two of the fastest accelerators of kidney damage. Here's what the science shows. High doses of caffeine taken all at once, especially over 300 milligrams, can cause a temporary rise in blood pressure, particularly in people who are caffeine sensitive or already hypertensive. And while that spike may fade, repeated daily surges matter over time. On top of that, caffeine's half-life is four to six hours. Drinking coffee after early afternoon can reduce deep sleep, raise nighttime cortisol, and increase inflammatory signaling exactly the environment kidneys struggle in. But the biggest danger often isn't the coffee. It's what's added to it. Many creamers and flavored syrups are loaded with phosphate additives, which are especially harmful to weakened kidneys and strongly linked to faster progression of chronic kidney disease. This is why labels matter more than most people realize. And for kidney transplant recipients, coffee can even interfere with medications like tacrolimus, where small dietary changes can shift drug levels into unsafe territory. So yes, coffee can protect, but used incorrectly, it can also mask deeper problems or amplify existing risks. The difference comes down to timing dose additives and individual sensitivity. And that leads us to the most practical question of all, how do you actually use coffee in a way that helps instead of harms? Because only knowing the risks isn't enough, there's a simple, smarter way to drink coffee that turns it back into a protective habit, and most people never get clear guidance on it. Here's where many people make a quiet but important mistake. They hear about caffeine risks and assume the solution is to give up coffee entirely. But in practice, I've seen the opposite work better changing the type of coffee and how it's brewed, not abandoning it. I remember a patient who loved coffee but struggled with anxiety and poor sleep. Every afternoon, cup made him restless at night, and his labs reflected it, higher inflammation, higher blood pressure, more fatigue. When we switched him to decaf and adjusted the brewing method, something surprising happened. His sleep improved, his stress markers settled, and he still kept the ritual he loved. That consistency mattered more than people realize. Here's the science behind it. Decaffeinated coffee retains most of the same polyphenols and chlorogenic acids found in regular coffee, the very compounds linked to antioxidant and anti-inflammatory kidney benefits. The main thing removed is caffeine, not the protective chemistry. That means for people who are caffeine sensitive, prone to insomnia or managing blood pressure decaf can deliver benefits without the downside. Brewing method matters too. Filtered coffee using paper filters removes certain lipid raising compounds like cafe stool that are present in unfiltered methods such as French press or boiled coffee. While these compounds are more often discussed in heart health, they also contribute to systemic inflammation, which kidneys don't tolerate well. A simple paper filter quietly reduces that burden. So the takeaway here isn't drink more coffee, it's drink smarter coffee. Choose the version your body tolerates, brew it in a way that reduces inflammatory load and protect your sleep at all costs. When those pieces line up, coffee becomes supportive instead of stressful. But even this still isn't the full picture. 
Because knowing what type of coffee to drink doesn't answer the most common question people ask me in clinic. How much, how often, and for someone like me, is it actually safe? Because only knowing decaf and brewing methods isn't enough. There's a final practical framework that determines whether coffee helps or harms, and it depends entirely on who you are and where your kidneys are right now. This is where everything finally comes together. Because the biggest mistake I see isn't people drinking coffee, it's people following advice that was never meant for their kidneys. Coffee isn't a yes or no question, it's a context question. And once you understand that the fear disappears and clarity takes its place. I think of a patient in her early 60s who told me, doctor, I stopped coffee because my friend with kidney disease did. But their situations weren't the same. Her blood pressure was controlled, her labs were stable, and her kidneys still had strong reserve. When we reintroduced coffee slowly earlier in the day, and without additives, her energy improved, her blood sugar stabilized, and her labs stayed steady. The protocol mattered more than the beverage itself. Here's what the evidence supports. For healthy adults, two to three cups per day, mostly black, and earlier in the day consistently shows benefit in large population studies. For CKD stages, one through three, one to three cups can still be appropriate if blood pressure is controlled and sleep is protected. This is where moderation becomes precision, not restriction. For CKD stages four and five, the margin is narrower. About one cup per day may still be reasonable, but potassium levels and overall tolerance must be monitored closely. And for kidney transplant recipients, coffee isn't automatically forbidden, but it must be discussed with the transplant team because medications like tacrolimus have a narrow safety window that diet can influence. And then there are people who say, coffee ruins my sleep. That matters. Poor sleep raises inflammation, cortisol, and blood pressure. Three things kidneys cannot afford. For them, decaf earlier in the day isn't a compromise. It's the smarter choice. This is the real takeaway. Coffee doesn't protect kidneys by accident. It protects them when it's matched to the person, the stage of kidney health, and the body's tolerance. When those pieces align, a daily habit becomes a long-term advantage instead of a hidden risk. But there's one final truth I want you to hear, because it's the one almost no one talks about, and it may matter more than coffee itself. Because only knowing how to drink coffee correctly still isn't enough. There's one last factor overlooked and underestimated that often determines whether kidneys remain stable or quietly cross a line they can't return from. Before we end, I want you to hear this clearly. If you've been worried about your kidneys, if lab numbers have made you anxious, or if you felt overwhelmed trying to do everything right, please remember this, you are not powerless and you are not too late. Kidney health isn't decided by one perfect choice or one mistake. It's shaped by small thoughtful habits repeated over time and understanding is always the first step toward protecting what matters. If this video helped you see coffee and your kidney health in a clearer, calmer way, I encourage you to save this video so you can come back to it whenever you need a reminder. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications, I share evidence-based kidney health information every week so you can stay informed, confident, and supported as you take care of your body. My hope is that the next time you think about your kidneys, you feel less fear and more clarity. Small changes made consistently can slow decline, protect function, and give your kidneys more time, sometimes years. And that time matters. Take care of yourself, take care of your health, and know that learning the right information today can make a meaningful difference for tomorrow.